He is one of the mightiest elven heroes to grace Middle-earth. Today, we paint Glorfindel. Glorfindel today will be kept as a couple of sub-assemblies. The main reason for this is for ease of painting. We can attach the cloak at the end with some superglue. And that being said, this is a four-drawed resin miniature, so you will need superglue to assemble it anyway, just in case you have not come across a resin model before. We are going to start on his elven armour, and for this some gold was mixed in with a little bit of Absolution Green Speed Paint by Army Painter. You can use some contrast paint by Games Workshop, or a dark green colour from your normal acrylic paint range, if you don't have the above. We are just going for a dark metallic green here as a base coat. Just think of the Green Goblin. <laughs> we will be switching over to a pretty terrible looking brush. And this time we are going to prod, or stipple, some gold over this green layer. Firstly, we use some greedy gold paint and then this was followed up with some bright gold. The stippling motion onto the armor gives an old burnished appearance, which can mimic a texture on a flat surface such as this armor. To give this gold armor a bit more bling, now that we have our initial colors on, the bright gold was used to highlight the edges of the armor and the filigree of the helmet. Be sure to switch back to a decent brush with a point for this, however. To create some visual interest and depth, some darker paint was lined in between each of the armor sections as well as the filigree. For this, rough iron was heavily diluted with some water to create a metallic wash. And as this paint is applied, we can see the armor plates start to take shape. Glorfindel is a mighty character in the game, and we would want him to stand out over our basic troops. So by adding highlights like this would be beneficial. You could certainly do the same method for your elves, or you could opt to do a dry brush method instead for a similar result. That's one of the great things about miniature painting, is that there are many paints and methods to use. It's just a balance of finding what you are happy doing and with what time you have available. Whilst we are working on the metallic stage, the chainmail and sword were up next, and these were both base coated with some gun metal. And this was followed up with some good old dark tone, just because shade paints are awesome. They allow us to do some quick shading on a miniature with little effort involved. Once completely dry, some shining silver was used to go over the chainmail by implementing downward brush strokes. This movement will allow the bristles to hit the upper parts of the sculpt and bring out those details. The same paint was used to carefully highlight the sword blade also. Painting the skin on can be slightly tricky on this model due to the helmet. It is very easy to get some paint onto the metal here, and if you do, just come back to it afterwards for a final tidy. Using a flash wash next does a lot of the work for you. It will separate the face and the helmet with that darker tone. Afterwards, using a brighter skin colour for your highlight will work wonders here for you, once you have picked out those pronounced areas of the nose, cheek and chin. You can further enhance the face by separating it from the helmet even more. To do so, you can add a dark brown, as this would work well, but I opted for a darker red instead, as this is my go-to style for painting skin tones. Speaking of which, if you would like me to do a video on how to paint different types of skin tones, then let me know, as one of my recent purchases was an Army Painter skin tone set. And this was due to the fantastic support of those that have helped the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee page. So thank you so much for being so generous. A final highlight of Corpse Pale was used just on the prominent areas once more to enhance the details of the face. The eye sockets were picked out with some mocha skin, and mummy robes were used for the whites of the eyes. We start now with the elven clothing, and the boots and the gloves were first. They were given a base coat of werewolf fur, followed by some strong tone afterwards once dry. We want this paint to sink into the recesses, especially between the fingers of the gloves. Now, whilst this shade paint is drying, we have two options. The first is to get a cup of tea, and the second is to start the cloak by applying our base colour of deep blue. A fun fact for you, I did both. 
Now back to our pointy-eared friend. A couple of highlights were added onto the leather areas. The first being our mid-tone of leather brown, followed up by monster brown for the finer highlight at the end. Now we are really starting to see the elf come together, so it's time to add some colour. The loincloth material was given a jade colour of wizard orbs. This is a nice vibrant colour and shall go well with our blue cloak once attached. Whilst that was drying, the central detail was picked out here with some desert yellow paint. Again, for a bit of speed whilst painting, going back and forth with the elements of this material was useful. So, as the yellow was drying, the jade colour was painted over with some plasmatic bolt speed paint as a wash. And whilst this was drying, we moved back onto the yellow detail. There are some faint lines sculpted onto the miniature here, so these were picked out with an acrylic paint rather than a wash, just to define them as much as possible. Likewise, the edges of these segments were also highlighted with Drake Tooth to bring out this sculpted detail. It kinda looks like a pie. Now for the jade green cloth section. At the moment, we have a flat colour with some wash over it. And being an important elf, we are going to create a simple, easy texture for our material. And that was to prod some toxic mist in between the protruding pattern. And speaking of which, let's paint that now. We start with rough iron and slowly pick out the details with a fine tip brush. Using this dark colour first will not only be a base colour for our gold, but to also act as a shadow line between our jade and the filigree. Highlighting with the same gold colours as we use for the armour, we should get something that looks like this. The last bit of cloth before we move on to our blue cloak was the undergarment that Glorfindel is wearing. This was painted darker to make it more neutral compared to the jade and blue colours. Like our cloak earlier, the blue was given a base coat of deep blue on the miniature. Again, let's be careful by not getting any on the golden armour here. The rest of the video will focus on the cloak sub-assembly, but be sure to apply the same colours onto the cloth on our elf too. We are going to progressively get the cloak lighter and lighter here, so we will be applying very thin down paint with multiple layers. This will build up the colours to our desired effect. The first was deep blue mixed with griffin blue. Notice how thin the paint is being applied, so that you can still see some of the previous paint layer underneath. Also note the direction of the brush strokes. They are all going the same way down the cloak, so that we will not get any irregular lines whilst painting. With these initial colours now layered onto our cloak, for these lighter areas, I like to add the darker tones into the shaded areas for some contrast. Again, using thin down paint, this allows us to go over the colours that are already there and blend them together, creating a smooth transition from our dark to light tones. Don't forget to do the underside of the cloak also. You may not see it all when it is attached to the miniature, but it's better to get it right now, as it will be difficult to reach once it has been glued on. Now we are starting to build up our colours for the cloak, and we can continue with our brighter highlights. The griffin blue that we used last was mixed with some royal cloak, and we continued with the same process as before, of layering. But this time we do not need to apply a wide amount like our first stage of deep blue and griffin blue. In fact, we can start now by applying this to the uppermost areas of the cloak. Afterwards, Royal Cloak by itself was used to now start picking out the highlighted areas of the cloth folds. But remember, we still want to blend this colour in when necessary. Just like here, where this lighter colour was added to the upper sections of the cloth folds. Hopefully, you can see the advantages of using super diluted paint for this. And the main highlights for our Blue Cloak was a mixture of Royal Cloak and Gorgon Hide. Slow and steady is the name of the game for the cloak today. After all, he is a character and a little bit more time was spent on him. However, if you would just like to get him game ready for the battlefield and save time, you could use the colours here today and check out the Paint Cloaks Easily video, which will cover a variety of different methods to get your miniatures completed.
The cloak filigree afterwards was painted in the exact same manner as we did for our Jade Tabard. And now for his beautiful elven hair. We are going to go for a nice blonde look today, so desert yellow was the colour of choice for our base coat. And once dry, some watered down dirt splatter was used as a wash. We will layer up the colours here and make them brighter as we go, similarly to the method that we did with the cloak. Desert yellow was mixed with some troll claws first, and we went lighter from there. We don't need to hit every strand of hair, just to select few that would be facing the sunlight on the outermost parts of the sculpt, leaving the darker brown areas in the shade. If necessary, you could always go in with a bit of oak brown at the end, and line in some darker shaded areas, just to make it a bit more refined. Before the cloak was attached to the main miniature, the sword scabbard was painted. The whole thing was painted red and then washed over with some mid-brown, just to give it that reddish leather look. The same colour was also used for the sword handle. There was a small amount of detail sculpted on here and this was just picked out with some matte black. And then a couple highlights were used for the edges of our red strapping, to finish off this part of the miniature. As you can see, this reddish colour contrasts nicely with the blue cloth and goes nicely with our gold that we have painted. For the horse details, such as the saddle and the barding, the jade green and blue were used to tie in with the colours of our glorious Elven Lord. And if you want to find out how to paint white horses in a variety of ways, then check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.